It's a nice morning for front porch sitting in South Georgia. It's about 69 degrees, sunny, and uh, I'm just out here processing some 300 black brass, doing some priming, maybe gonna do a little bit of reading if my kid lets me. Um, and it's been a minute, so I thought I would check in with y'all and uh, talk to you a little bit about where I'm at after a couple years and 4,301 <laughs> rounds fired through the LCP2 light rack 22 long rifle. Um, so let's get right into it. Um, why am I doing a 4301 review? I told you guys I was going to check back in at 5,000, I think, and we're 700 rounds shy of that. Well, 699 rounds shy of that. So why the odd number and why am I checking in now? Well, there is actually a pretty good reason for that. So um, without too much ado, without making too much of it, it's not some big dramatic sequence and I don't wanna um, dress it up as something more than it, it is or was. But um, about six weeks ago, uh, for the first time in my life, I've been carrying a gun concealed for more than a decade. Um, I've had a, a carry permit for more than a decade now. And um, there have been a couple of occasions where I needed to present it in order to stop a situation from escalating and becoming more violent. Um, but for the first time in my life, about six weeks ago, um, I had to discharge a firearm in public um, in defense. And as luck would have it, this was the gun I had on me. So let's talk about it. Um, I had just gotten off of work. I'm working crazy hours and uh, I needed to get some exercise because it was feeling gross. So I went to the park down the street uh, where they have a pull-up bar and I was doing my pull-ups, doing my push-ups. Um, I had finished with the workout and the park is not too far from my house. So I had just walked to the park and I was going to walk home. Um, I started down the street, back to the house, and I wasn't 20 steps away from the pull-up bar, and I saw this kid tearing towards me on a bicycle. And I'm talking like a kid. He's probably, I don't know, 10 or 12 years old. And um, it's obvious to me that he's, he's riding faster than a kid would be riding like just for leisure. And then I see why, right? He's being chased by this um, big, muscly, angry looking gray pit bull. And I'm not altogether sure in the moment if the dog is playing or not. Um, and it, the, the thing about this is that it, it all happened super fast. So I'm trying to process a lot of things in a really short period of time. And um, it's clear to me, as the kid's coming towards me, that, that he's going to get away. Um, the dog is not going to catch him. He's gained too much momentum. Um, and the, the pit bull, I think, realizes that too. Um, but he, the pit bull <laughs> exists in a target-rich environment, and he turns his attention to me. I'm like this six foot two, 230 pound lumbering creature. I am not going to get away from him. Um, so he turns his attention to me and very aggressively closes the distance. Um, and I give him all the ground that I can. I backpedal, backpedal, backpedal. Um, I, I don't want to get into it with this dog, um, but it, as it gets closer to me, it's very obvious that he's not playful that this isn't fun and games, that he doesn't just want to pat on the head. Something's wrong. Um, I don't know if he was rabid or what, but he was super aggressive. And you'll just have to take my word for it. I'm not um, like a particularly emotional person. I tend to have a lot of patience. My job requires it and uh, a lot of restraint, but there was not another option. I backed up and backed up and backed up until I couldn't back up anymore. Uh, my heels hit the curb. So I was backed up all the way to the park and um, the dog lunged at me, jumped at me, um, trying to bite me. And I don't even exactly remember taking the LCP out of my gym shorts, but I must have. Um, and I also had the presence of mind, it's probably a product of training, um, something I do quite a lot of. Um, but I had already disabled the safety, and um, when he lunged at me, I presented the 
LCP and I fired one round. Um, believe me, I would have fired more. I had had every intention in the moment of emptying the gun into this dog's face um, because I, I didn't want to get bit by it. Um, I've been bit by pit bulls before. Well, a pit bull, let me, let me um, issue a, a brief correction. It wasn't plural, just one, but I have a, a scar there on my middle finger, if you can see that. Um, and that dog was playing. This one was not. So I know what they're capable of. Um, this one was mean. It was on me. I, I really did not feel like I had an option. It's like, believe me, I, I don't uh, aspire to discharge handguns in public parks or near public parks. It's not like an ambition of my life. It was um, a case of do it or, or be maimed at, at best. Um, so anyway, I fired one round and like I said, I had full intentions of emptying the gun, which on this particular day had, uh, it was loaded with CCI stingers, 11 of them, and I would have put all 11 of them in the dog's face, um, except the one had such an effect on him that there was no opportunity to. It wasn't even that there was no need to, there was no opportunity to. After that first round touched off, there was no target for me to, to aim and shoot at. Um, it, it all happened really fast, like I said, and that's th this is not my first brush with violence. Uh, I may or may not have mentioned on this channel before, and I, I'm not trying to throw a pity party for myself or anything like that. Like, I'm not a victim, I'm the hero of my story, but um, it's fair to say that I grew up in a poor, unstable environment, and um, violence was a part of that. So without getting into too many details, I've witnessed shootings and I've witnessed stabbings, not of dogs, but of people. Um, and I've been in fights. So like, I'm not, not a total novice when it comes to violence. And what shocks me, what shocks me, what shocked me this time, although it wasn't the first time, it shocks me every time. is just how fast everything happens, how, how little time there is. Um, it's, it's not like, romantic and it's hard to recall sometimes certain specific details because everything happens so fast it's fast and it's violent and it's ugly and um that's very much that was very much my experience in this instance too so i touched off one round and i was aiming as much as i could aim in the moment you know at very much point blank range and the thing is moving and i'm moving and i'm trying not to get bit and i'm falling down up against the curb like it's all happening basically at the same time. Um, I touch off one round and I'm aiming roughly for the face. I don't think I got him in the face. I think I got him in the neck. Um, and he really, really didn't like it. And as I said, there was no time to get off a second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh, etc. shot. Um, that one round touched off and a combination of the noise, the concussion, and what I assume is a gunshot wound to the neck sent this thing running as fast as it had been running towards the kid and then towards me in the opposite direction. It tore off down the street and disappeared into like a little, I don't know if you would call it an alleyway exactly, but like, I guess a grass alleyway between houses. Um, and then, um, like things did not slow down. If anything, they started happening faster. I found myself trying to do several things at once. Um, I was trying to, holster the gun um because again i'm in like a very public place it's just around sunset at a public park um and uh, i'm trying to get the kid on the bicycle to stop <laughs> because i think that it might be advantageous for me to have a witness um and i'm trying to call the police so i called the cops and uh told them what had happened the kid agreed to stay and he's like 10 or 12 neighborhood kid i've seen him playing before he shoots shoots hoops down the street and and i'd asked him to please stay and talk to to responding law enforcement just so it's not just me saying i was attacked by a dog so that like the only other person who saw it or the only other person who i thought saw it um would be able to give his version of events which i hoped would corroborate my own so um the kid agreed to stay i called the cops the cops came and um, this is where the story gets interesting, but also kind of dissatisfying. Like, as somebody who is passionate about narrative and who believes that good stories should have real endings, um, this is sort of frustrating for me because um, I, I, we don't necessarily get that neat, tidy wrap-up in this instance. So the cops got there, and um, 
they asked me. I flagged them down with my flashlight. I carry in, see if I have it on me. Yeah, I do. It's carrying my, my Olight uh, Baton 3, and it's got this neat strobe mode. So I threw it on strobe, flag, flagged them down. They came over and talked to me and the kid, and they asked me if I was the one who called. I said yes, and they asked me what happened. So I gave them, you know, a, a brief recap of what had just occurred, told them essentially I was attacked by a dog. Um, I was in fear for my safety, and I fired one round. I think I hit him in the neck, um, and he took off running. So they, um, they asked me where I was when I fired the shot, and I showed them. And they spent all of 30 seconds <laughs> uh, looking around for my brass, uh, and I, I told them it should just be one casing. They didn't ask it this time to see the gun, by the way. They just asked me if I was the one who called, and I told them yes. They did ask me if I was... If I was still carrying the gun, I told them yes, about one o'clock, my waistband, my gym shorts. Um, and so they spent, you know, 20, 30 seconds looking for my brass. They weren't able to recover it. Um, and then they started tracking the dog, um, trying to figure out where it got off to so that they could determine whether or not it was dead. Uh, I don't know if it was somebody's pet or a stray. It wasn't wearing a collar. Um, extremely aggressive, like I said. Um, so they tracked the dog, but they weren't able to find the dog either. And uh, so they came back after not being able to find the dog, after not being able to find my brass, and they said, well, I mean, if you didn't call us and tell us, we honestly wouldn't even know that a shooting occurred here. Um, and uh, at this point, like, a crowd had sort of gathered around, um, people who live in the neighboring um, area, like people who, who live near the park, I guess they'd heard the shot, they'd heard the police, they'd heard the commotion. So people had kind of gathered around and I'm, I'm more than a little overwhelmed at this point. Like you have to remember that my, my heart rate was already jacked. I just finished a workout and then I'm, you know, very suddenly, uh, presented with this need to defend myself, which caused a second adrenaline spike and heart rate spike. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty much over it at this point. And, um, they told me, like I said, that there was, there was no real evidence that a shooting had even occurred and that if I hadn't called them, they wouldn't have even known, but they talked to the kid on the bike, kid on the bike, thankfully saw what I saw, um, what I thought I saw, you know, it's hard to be objective when something's happening to you, but, um, when it's happening to you quickly and it's violent, it's hard to be objective. But the kid told them basically that the dog had been chasing them, him and that, um, that the dog, uh, tried to bite me and that I, I shot at it. And the kid said that he wasn't sure that I hit the dog. I'm, I'm quite sure that I did in the neck. Um, but be that as it may, uh, the kid pretty much corroborated my version of events that the dog had been chasing him and then attacked me and that I fired a shot at it. Um, and thankfully, I mean, like it made me feel as much as you can feel better about the situation like this. It made me feel better that the kid said that the dog had attacked his friend in the past and, and um, wounded his friend. So this is not like an isolated incident. It's apparently a problem animal. Um, like I said, don't know if it was a stray or somebody's pet. I just don't know. But um, at this point, uh, like I said, a, a crowd had sort of started to gather. And I asked the responding officers if they would give me a ride home. Um, because I don't know if I just killed somebody's pet. Um, I don't particularly want to deal with anybody who might be uh, invested in the safety of the animal at this point. Like I just, I don't want to deal with anybody. I really don't feel like walking home anymore. And so um, they, they said, sure, no problem. Uh, would you mind taking off the gun? And so I did and I unloaded it and gave it to them. Uh, and they gave me a ride home. Um, and when we got back to my house, they told me uh, that, you know, of course, to be careful about discharging a gun in public. And I told them, believe me, you know, been carrying for a decade, never have before, really didn't want to today. Um, I understand that it's serious and I wouldn't have if there were another option in the moment there wasn't. And um, they said, okay, that's fine. Uh, and they gave me the gun back and told me that if anything came of this, as in, I guess, if, if the owner of the animal, if it was somebody's pet, made a complaint or whatever. If anything came of it, they told me that they would give me a call and I took down my cell phone number and that was it. So I don't know if the dog ran out, ran away and bled, bled out. Um, I don't know if the dog survived. It's a small caliber weapon. It's not a howitzer or anything. We've talked about that several times. I just don't know. Um, I did go back to the park the next day um, and I wanted to sort of reassess what had happened 
process it a little bit and also I wanted to find that brass um, because I was quite sure that I should be able to. And uh, I did, it, I found one silver CCI casing. It had been ran over a couple times, so it's kind of flattened, but I found the brass and took it home. Um, just as a reminder, put it in my curio cabinet as a reminder, um, because it's so easy. And this is sort of like why we're checking in now. It's so easy to leave the house without a gun, in particular when you're wearing clothes that are like not especially well suited to concealed carry. I'm in gym shorts, I'm going to work out, right? It'd been a lot easier to just go naked and had I done that, I'd have been chewed up by by a pretty vicious pit bull. Um, so it was a reminder, this whole scenario was a reminder of the importance of carry, the, the obligation to carry at a high percentage, you know, as, as close to 100% of the time as you can because you don't know, you don't get to choose when bad things happen to you. Bad things sometimes happen to good people and you don't get to choose when. Um, I didn't get to choose when, and I didn't get to choose what I had on me. Like, obviously, I would have much rather had something like uh, my Glock 48 or uh, an M60 machine gun or a tactical nuke, right? But you don't, you don't get to choose when bad things happen and something beats nothing. And I, on this day, I was really, really grateful to have this little LCP-2 uh, light rack and 22 long rifle tucked into my gym shorts. Um, saved my bacon on that day. So... 4,301 rounds through the gun, still running good, still trusting it, my life to it when I can't carry something better, which is not a lot of the time. Like most of the time, if I'm wearing pants that will support, um, that, that have belt loops, uh, that that will support a, uh, a larger weapon, usually Glock 48, um, with the Shield Arms 15 shot magazines is my go-to, but um, if I'm in gym shorts or swim trunks or pajamas, um, that may not be an option. Uh, and this is, you know, off the top of my head, I want to say this is like an 11 and 12 ounce gun. Um, so this is still an option and uh, I'm really grateful that it is. Um, and for as much as I regret having to use it in a defensive capacity at a public park, um, I was really, really thankful that I had the discipline to have it on me. Um, and uh, I'm glad that I had a base of training that allowed me to use the weapon to good effect in this defensive capacity. Um, you'll see here that there are eight magazines on the table. I actually have 10. Um, one I keep in the center console of my truck for emergencies and another one I keep in my travel bag for when I travel. Um, but uh, when I go to the range, I take all 10 and that makes it easy to get 100 rounds through the gun for each training session, which makes it easy to keep track of how many rounds I've put through the gun total. Um, and uh, as a rule, I put at least 100 through, sometimes more, very rarely less, and I try to train bi-weekly. Um, sometimes I'm able, only able to go monthly. Here lately, I've been so busy with work, I've only been able to go monthly. But that means that every time I go out, I'm putting at least 100 rounds through the gun. Um, and those reps are super important. I can afford to get those reps in because this is a rim fire instead of a center fire, something like a 380. Um, and I think that it's that strong base of familiarity and training that, that helped me use this really diminutive um, weapon to good effect in the only uh, self-defense encounter I've been in that actually required me to fire a shot. Um, and as to the gun, its reliability, its suitability for the task of uh, underwear gun, if you will, um, it's still getting it done. Uh, occasionally I'll have light strikes with um, bulk pack ammunition. That's just par for the course with uh, rimfire, but with a quality load, CCI stingers, CCI mini mags, uh, we're running really close to 100%. The weapon is mechanically very accurate, although it is hard to shoot well, especially for new shooters. Um, it is mechanically very accurate. I'm able to make good hits on human sized targets to 50 yards with this still. Um, and as you can see, the Cerakote wear doesn't lie. Um, it has been carried plenty. Um, I did want to show you guys one more thing if I could. Um, so chamber is clear, magazine well is clear. This is an empty magazine, you can see that. Um, and this little red guy here is a snap cap. Um, and the reason I wanted to show you this is because I can't show you how to do it. That's against our tech overlords rules, but I can tell you that it is possible to 
chamber that snap cap, all right? It is possible with this gun to disable the magazine disconnect, which I think is um, a design flaw uh, for the Ruger LCP2 and 22 long rifle. I understand why they did it um, to make it legal in more jurisdictions, but I think it's actually a pretty dangerous feature when you consider that these um, nasty violent encounters tend to take place very quickly and at very very close quarters. Um, it stands to reason that you might be grappling with a rabid pit bull or um, a even more dangerous, unstable, two-legged predator. Um, it's gonna happen at very close quarters, maybe um, at contact distances. And when you're in that sort of grappling entanglement, there's a probability that you're gonna push that magazine disconnect, or excuse me, that magazine release button and eject your magazine, even only partially. And if that happens when the magazine disconnect is in place and enabled, um, you won't have that round in the chamber to get your aggressor off of you. So I can't show you how it's done. I can only tell you that it's possible to remove the magazine disconnect and um, that's a alteration you may or may not consider. Nothing that's uh, contained within this video should be taken as advice, especially not legal advice. I'm not a lawyer, I'm not an expert, I'm just a dude. Um, but after 4,301 rounds through the LCP2 and 22 long rifle, I'm still a believer, still an advocate. I'm really glad that I made the purchase and really glad that I've disciplined myself to keep it on me when nothing else will do. Um, thanks for checking in, guys. Hope everybody's doing well out there. Peace.